no, it's. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, that was on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yep. All right. Uh, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, first up, we have our uh, annual presentation of the uh, Irvington Union Free School District budget by Superintendent uh, Christopher Harris. Yeah. Welcome back, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you very much for having me, Mr. Mayor, trustees. It's always a, a pleasure uh, to be here. It feels like we're just doing this because time goes fast. It does. <laughs> it does. It's hard to believe 11 years of, of this, and it's always one of my highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Circled on the calendar. There we go. Uh, the Academy Award. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah, should, oh, sure. should be here. Hold on. This is up to the top. Oh, the the oh you know what? It's showing up on my screen. That's weird. Hmm. Hold on. It might help to hit that enable editing because it might be something that's blocking. But... Right. Yeah. There you go. Ah, look at that. Let's see. Let's see, see if it goes, goes forward. It's not working. This isn't working. It's going to fit me. It's funny. Okay. Um, all right. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, it's all right. So um, I certainly will try to be efficient in my words this evening. Um, but in the school district, we're always very vision driven and make sure that we have a focus on those priorities that are consistently before us. And in doing so, it's always making sure that we're focused on students' well-being, um, both academically and socially and emotionally. Um, we have a consistent focus, as you've seen through our capital projects, on maintaining uh, the best possible learning spaces and always supporting our staff to do the very best. But we also take seriously our financial stewardship um, to make sure that we can maintain budgets that are under the tax cap that we, from time to time, as we've seen over the past couple of years, have bonds when they are appropriate and tax neutral when possible. And we always keep an eye on uh, the tax rate and how that will affect all the residents of the school community. All right, quicker, just once. All right. So that being said, when we think about our focus, we have um, strategic objectives that are directly linked to our strategic plan, which we're in the midst of updating right now. So we use these as a check and balance to always ensure that we're focused on the priorities in the school district. And essentially it's a mechanism of, of accountability for the, the board um, and the administration to always ensure that we're um, directly aligned with what those most important pieces are here in the school district. Um, that being said, we use them to guide our entire budget process. Every single consideration we made, we directly linked to um, each and every um, budgetary ask or initiative. And those were all highlighted through a series of um, public facing community presentations um, where the board um, asked a lot of um, tough questions, um, certainly pushed the administration to um, come up with the best possible plan for the use of the budget funds this year. As you see the long list of dates that are there, um, those are all of the public sessions that were held at board meetings. Uh, all of them are certainly uh, inventoried on the website along with all the presentation materials from each and every step. So if you're interested, you could follow the, the budget's evolution to get to the place where we are today. Um, so that being said, um, where we take a look at where, where we were, you can see what the school district budget was for the 22-23 school year, it's about $68.5 million, and we have a push ahead increase, and that's looking at taking all the services that we have operating in the district today and student needs that are before us and moving that forward at tomorrow's cost, um, and then about a million and a half dollars worth of new considerations that come up with the proposed budget total of $73,079,120. Um, when we look at the different considerations, um, these are all the new initiatives that are included in the budget, and they all link directly back to student needs, what students need to do their very best. 
um, in the school district. Um, we certainly are seeing um, lots of needs associated with mental health, thus um, an additional school psychologist tied into that and some other um, support positions that will be able to help maximize uh, teaching and learning. Where you see the screen divided into two halves with the lower half being in yellow. Um, I'm gonna come back to this in a moment, um, but realistically we're taking a good chunk of the budget and we're looking at one-time expenditures because we're receiving a massive influx of state aid this year. And in doing so, we didn't wanna invest in recurring costs, recognizing that there would be that carrying forward and the push ahead each and every year. So we could use th this money in future years to offset challenges that may come our way financially. Um, so that being said, again, um, really linking back to how I started, um, everything comes back to meeting those in, uh, certain um, objectives that we talked about. Um, we're constantly looking at how we're able to keep up with um, technology and all the instructional needs that are placed uh, upon school districts. Um, special education needs are always evolving and are a challenge to fund at times and are quite pricey. But it's critical to ensure that we're always developing our programs as we are um, this year through a couple added um, positions to be able to support students' needs. Um, but most importantly, to try to keep every student here home in the Irvington schools. Um, we have a significant focus on professional development to continue to grow our teachers' expertise and improve their practice in the classrooms. Um, we're focusing on continued work around uh, social emotional learning and our ongoing diversity um, and equity initiatives. Um, and then you'll see, um, as what was referenced really in those uh, highlighted yellow areas um, with continued focus on our facilities. So our tax cap levy, as I indicated, that this is a uh, budget that's compliant with the tax cap uh, formula. In doing so, if you come all the way down to the bottom, you can see that um, the impact on the voters is 3.41%. And that's an important number to uh, remember because once we throw in big influx of state aid and the revenues, that number jumps up. And uh, I'll speak to that in a moment. So when we look at our revenues, um, that point that really stands out is that huge increase in state aid to see a variance of almost two and a quarter million dollars and an increase in state aid of 45%. Unfortunately, there's a story that's many years long here and that the state had not been funding its foundation aid formula. And in doing so, the Irvington School community was shorted nearly $25 million over time. We're never gonna see that money come into the back to the community's coffers to the school district but what they are actually doing now is fully funding the formula so had we been in a position in years past where they're funding the formula we would have been receiving easily half a million dollars a year if not more based upon the formula itself um, when we look at um, the budget you can see for the most part it's everything's being held pretty tight when we see those other categories those are things that we're carrying over from one year to the next so a lot of times um, there are expenditures that have already been budgeted for where we'll allocate the funds from year to year but um, the one thing really to take a look at here is the bottom line to see the 6.72 percent budget increase that's because of that huge influx in state aid the impact on the taxpayers is the 3.41 percent which is relatively consistent with what we've proposed in prior years. So just a quick overview, and it's not showing well, but a quick overview to see that big jump in, in state aid. We're seeing almost double in state aid, um, but the story that we always have to look at in a community such as Irvington's is the fact that the vast majority of the budget here in this year, over 86%, is on the back of the taxpayers where we're raising revenues through property taxes. Um, so we're glad to see that red uh, piece of the pie growing, um, and hopefully the state will be able to keep up with that. Why I referenced um, those areas that were highlighted in yellow earlier, if you've seen any reports from the state comptroller in recent months, he's talking about the state and federal government hitting a fiscal cliff when it comes to education funding. So while we're pleased to see the state being able to fund the formula, we're concerned that they're not gonna be able to maintain it moving forward. So here you have the comptroller 
saying that they're not going to be able to do it in two to three years time. So it's important to ensure that we're investing that money in a way that we'll be able to draw from that to be able to maintain our day to day expenditures down the road. Um, so then when we take a look at our um, expenditures, you can see some um, modest increases here, but it's probably you're seeing in the village as well, um, large increases in benefit costs. Um, you're looking at health insurance trends that are 17, 18% across the country right now. Um, and other be related benefits are increasing as well. So we're seeing big jumps there. Um, and we've been fortunate to be able to hold things down. Uh, but for the most part, um, some responsible growth here. Transportation has been a real challenge industry wide. I've seen reports of other school districts that have had increases when they've gone out the bid that were 150% what they were paying prior year. Um, so we're seeing significant um, costs uh, there. And that's even before the legislation for electric buses begins to kick in. And then taking a look at our expenditures, we always say that in a school district, um, we are all about people or an uh, industry of people. So you can see nearly 75% of our budget directly goes to the salaries and benefits of our employees. Um, so that being said, you can see an overview of the budget, the revenues and expenditures, um, and where that 6.72% increase comes into play. But again, be reminded that 3.41 is the impact on the taxpayers of the Irvington School community. And then the budget trends, um, you can see when I, where I was making that reference before, you can see we have lots of numbers that are in the threes going down the middle column where we look at those typical increases because we're not accustomed to seeing state increases in Irvington. Typically, it's inconsequential, maybe $100,000 here and there. So to get that large increase of $2 million really drives that number up significantly. And then because of shifts in our tax base here and the actual evaluations, um, in our community, um, we're seeing the tax rate uh, drop 1.87%. So each community member could take their own assessment for their property and run this simple equation and we'll be able to come up um, with an estimate of what their property taxes will be or school taxes will be for the coming school year. And this year we have one um, additional proposition besides asking voters to vote on the budget and to vote for three trustees uh, seats that are open. Uh, we introduced a, a capital reserve fund um, back in I think it was 2014. And in doing so, the intent then initially was to be able to put money away to be able to replace the turf field when it came to the end of its life. But when you take a look at what the market is like, when the district has excess funds, it makes plenty of sense when you have a surplus at the end of the year to turn and put the money into a fund like this. We're currently earning almost 5% in our investments right now. And so when we think about future capital projects, we'll be able to put the money in the bank, any excess monies that we have, earn interest on it rather than borrowing it when we have capital projects in the future and having to pay interest. Um, so we're asking the voters to increase the cap on this reserve account from $1.5 million to $10 million. Um, and you can see we'll be able to contribute funds to this over a period of um, 15 years. When we go to use this money, it, it has to, it has to have voter approval. So we would go through a typical process we, like we would for a capital project where the board it goes through, identifies priorities, has its architects and engineers develop the project, we present it to the community, then ultimately the community uh, will be asked to vote on it, but we will not be borrowing new money, we'll be using money that the district has saved and invested. Um, so really the, the story here is that we're, we're planning for the future and rather than borrowing money at a future date and having to pay interest, we're going to be saving money now and being able to earn interest on that money. And the next slide is uh, lots of words, uh, but this is exactly what the proposition will look like on the ballot on May 16th. And then finally, um, at the next Board of Education meeting on Tuesday the 9th, there's the typical public hearing. Community members will have the opportunity um, to come in and share their thoughts on the budget with the Board of Education. And then finally, uh, on Tuesday the 16th, we have the annual meeting, which is the budget vote and trust the election, which will be happening right next door in the Main Street School Gym from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
So that is the overview in a nutshell. Certainly happy to entertain any questions the trustees may have. I'm just curious about the lack of, of state funding that you were talking about. Was that something that affected Irvington only or all of the county uh, or all the states? Statewide, or? I would say we take a look at um, districts with similar socioeconomics. Um, we're not receiving full funding. Um, there were, and when we step back and we think of our um, more impoverished communities across the state, focus was on directing money to where there was greater need during those periods of time. So they introduced the formula um, that was called a, a gapped, uh, gap adjustment. So back when the state had the big um, gap in its budget, they created a formula and based upon the economics in school communities, you saw decreases in your funding. And so that brought down um, what the state was paying. And they, then when they saw their increases, when they would go to say, well, we're, the state's gonna increase education funding by 2%, they worked off that baseline rather than working off the number that they were supposed to be funding. But essentially based on simple answer, community economics. Mm -hmm. I guess related, do you, uh, I guess it's hard to say, but you mentioned that uh, it's probable we get the similar funding for the next few years. Is that yeah. the idea? Yeah, the, the state's intention is that they're going to continue to fund at this level moving forward. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we have little faith in their ability to do so. It would be fabulous if they're able to continue um, on this trajectory. And when they look at increases to education funding in the state budget, we would see that percent increase on the numbers that we're receiving today. Uh, but you know, when the state comptroller comes out and says they're gonna hit a fiscal cliff in two to three years, I just don't know how it's gonna happen. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Well, Good. thanks as always for coming in. And no, my pleasure. Us, uh, Thank you for having me. And for our partnership all year long. So. Absolutely, much appreciated. And I hope to see you all at the polls on the 16th. Absolutely, we'll remind everybody we have a meeting on the 15th, so 15. we can remind everybody. Perfect. Yeah, so. Excellent. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you guys for coming in. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Uh, next up, we have announcements. The first one that uh, about the Memorial Day ceremonies and parade, they were scheduled for Memorial Day, uh, not coincidentally, which is Monday, May 29th, 2023, at 10 a.m. at the Main Street uh, Memorials. Uh, there's a special meeting regarding the formation of the Diversity, Diversity Equity, and Inclusion Committee. That's this Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023 at 815 at the Irvington Senior Center, which is 29 Bridge Street. Um, we're also going to be scheduling a public hearing, requesting a special <coughs> permit for adaptive reuse of the historic building, which is 67 North Broadway, also known as Villa Loaro. That's for Monday, May 15th uh, at 7 p.m. in Village Hall. I'll actually make a motion for that public hearing if I can have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we also will be scheduling a public hearing to consider a request by Abbott House to establish a community residence facility pursuant to, to the Padman Law. It's also for Monday, May 15th at 7 p.m. in Village Hall. I will make a motion for that if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I just wanted to point out that there's a possibility that the hearing will be rescheduled or moved to Jan uh, June 5th, but I, I still have to coordinate with Abbott House. It's at their request, not ours. So, but we're opening it on the 15th and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, another public hearing to consider local law amending the zoning code to clarify provisions on solar energy equipment also for Monday, May 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at Village Hall. I can have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then lastly, another announcement. Um, the yesterday unveiling <coughs> dedication, which is scheduled for Saturday, June 10th at 11 a.m. at Madam T.J. Walker Plaza at 85 Main Street. Um, yesterday, of course, is the... Um, the statue uh, commemorating the uh, enslaved people of Irvington um, that is going to be actually on school district property, but um, we're going to gather at Madam C.J. Walker Plaza because there's more room there, but uh, it should be it should be a, uh, a moving day for sure. And that's all I have for um, uh, announcements. If anybody else has anything? Otherwise, I will move on to correspondence. Through all these uh, attachments, there's a lot of uh, well, there's a lot of attachments. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. So, uh, Matt 
Matthew Besedsky. Uh, Dear Mayor and Trustees, the Route 9 Complete Streets Design Project presents a tremendous opportunity to make Broadway work for everybody. That will not only come to that will only come to fruition if the DOT is forced to use international best practices, physically controlling vehicle speeds, and creating safe spaces for all street users. For myself and plenty of others, protecting bike lanes and a safer Broadway would allow for much easier and safer access to many different parts of the area, including school, Main Street, and the other river towns. By separating bicycle riders from the single largest threat to their safety on the road, cars, protected bike infrastructure on Broadway would create a safer space for those on bikes. Additionally, protected bike infrastructure would be a major improvement over the aqueduct, which is very bumpy. It's incredibly snowy or even icy during the winter, running around unusable sometimes for weeks at a time. Uh, furthermore, pedestrians also benefit from the pr protected bike lane infrastructure. This is because the protected bike lanes create a buffer between cars and sidewalks, thus making sidewalks much safer. Lastly, redesigning Broadway to limit car speeds, i.e., by narrowing lanes, introducing more and higher quality crosswalks, and extending curbs can benefit bicycle riders and pedestrian safeties greatly. And every small reduction in vehicle speed leads to a great drop in chances of car accident fatalities. For these reasons, it's crucial that DOT does a great job and uses all the best practices that redesigning of Route 9. Is, uh, as our liaison Mitch, to the to the committee, you can pass on those words. I will do so. Ladies, I want to comment. Uh, next up, we have public comments. <clears throat> is anyone on home either? Right? There is someone at home. If you want to, sure. We start yeah. start with the person <coughs> since they came out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'm David Rubin from 55 Circle Drive. I've been here before on the same topic. I heard from Mr. Schultz for today with a, a bit of a response, but I'm here and I sent you guys a note to let you know that the issue that I've raised about fencing on, on adjacent to my property has now gotten worsened, has now worsened uh, because of the rainfall that we had. What is clear now is that the actions taken by the neighbor have change the course of water and this extends from the famous pond on the Luberic property for those of you I many of you probably know about that it comes under Riverview Road the village increased curb heights which helped quite a bit that was a number of years ago but now because of the actions taken by the neighbor with the construction of the fence which is now warping and is just falling apart as well as other changes that I don't know what they did I now have water, instead of coming down the specific stream where it's been coming for 20 years, it's now coming down my entire property. All of this could have been avoided if the village had enforced the fencing laws that exist, if they had been, if the neighbor had been forced to appear before the uh, uh, architectural Re review board and get approval, they just ignored it and just went about their business. So once again, I ask the board to take direct action active action, not just to find them with a citation that's unenforceable, but to force them to make changes. Okay. I mean, I think as we, I think we've discussed before, uh, it really comes down to a cost benefit for the village and to hire, we don't have a prosecutor on staff. We have to pay them hourly. And to us, like the cost benefit of this, like we've already issued the violations. Um, they can't do any more work on the house. Uh, they can't sell the house. Um, and they are, I think that the building inspector has been out there multiple times trying to get them to comply. Um, Voluntarily, right? So, uh, so the only thing we haven't done is actually hired the prosecutor, which would cost thousands and thousands of dollars for a probably a few hundred dollar fine. Um, so that's that's kind of where, that's why we haven't gone the prosecutor route, just a cost benefit analysis. Uh, but I do think that, you know, the, the, the building department has not given up on getting them to comply voluntarily. Um, and again, they are stopped from doing any other work, uh, at least legally, um, until they comply. So that, that, that's good to hear. I will just point out one, one other thing, um, which is that, um, no, I forgot what I was going to say, which is that, um, the, the, as I said, the, the, the village has already in the past taken steps to try to control the, the, the flow of water from that entire stretch. Okay. And I know that that issue is still ongoing. So to the extent that the village has taken an active interest in this, this is just another manifestation of that, and it could give the village more incentive to take action. That's all I wanted to add. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in person? Otherwise, we'll move to online. Yep. Welcome back, Felix. Hey, Brian. How are you? Um, Good, thank you. 
Uh, thanks for the presentation, Dr. Harrison. I, had, I, I wasn't sure, I, my comment was actually not about that. I wasn't sure, this is not the forum, right, to ask questions about that. We should hold those to the meeting, I'm assuming. Yeah, or you can email uh, Dr. Harrison. Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, my question actually, my, my, my comment actually was related to the letter that you just read. Um, okay. Was that, um, that letter uh, related to a, a redesign of Broadway that's actually contemplated or was it just kind of a hypothetical, uh, you know, wish, if you will? Uh, no, I would say it's somewhere between a hypothetical wish and reality, um, where I'm not exactly sure, but for five years, Larry? Yeah, about the study goes back before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. probably about five years or so. Um, New York State looked at the stretch, I guess, from Rogers border through Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. um, some of it, I think, was through bridge money with some of the funding. But um, they've worked with all the municipalities, as you as you can imagine, if you go from Yonkers to Sleepy Hollow, the uh, stretches of Route 9 are very different. How they're used is very different. Um, the, the way they're, they're laid out is very different. Um, they did come back with a like a, a conceptual proposal about two years ago now. Yeah, that was months ago. Yeah, it was actually our, the villages hired a consultant. It wasn't the DOT. The DOT was involved. Yeah, but the villages came back with a with a uh, study, which is all uh, it's all posted online. Um, Route Nine Active org is the website, and uh, and now the state has funding to to do preliminary engineering on Route Nine over that stretch. So that's what's prompting that letter. Yeah, uh, obviously we have, we have concerns about really from uh, say north of Main Street to the sun, to Sunnyside Lane. Uh, traffic there is already horrendous. Um, you know, so we, we're really, we're, we're, why we'd love to have, you know, kind of complete streets. We don't want to have it if it's going to back up, you know, during rush hour or school rush hour uh, to, you know, the Tops Ferry and to, uh, and to Sleepy Hollow. So, um, we we're anxious to see what the state comes up with. We actually have ongoing di dialogue. Um, trustee to my right, Mitch, is actually uh, our liaison to the committee. Um, they're meeting Wednesday. Um, so it's, it's definitely ongoing and active. So it's definitely not uh, a dream, but what, what actually happens, I think, is still TBD. Okay. No, that's super helpful. Thank you. I mean, I guess in, in, in that case, I'll just go ahead and say I would certainly uh, be, I'd like to come out um, it, against the bike lane idea, obviously we all, you know, want people to be healthy and ride bikes, but you know, Broadway is very, it's, it, the lanes are very narrow as it is. I don't see, I mean, again, I'm not an engineer, but I don't see how you would ever make space for them. And quite frankly, um, you know, with respect, bike lanes are a good example of like, uh, um, a privilege for the few at the inconvenience, at the expense of the inconvenience for the many. And so, you know, there's lots of places you can ride your bike. I appreciate people would like to ride their bikes more, but I just don't see that. That seems to me to be like a totally disastrous idea. Um, unless, you know, there's a feat of engineering. I'm just not, you know, again, someone with a greater vision than me. So that's, I just want to register that. Um, if, but, it, and I appreciate Larry, thank you. I, I just pulled up that website. I'm going to take a look through this because somehow I was completely unaware of this project. Right. But that design is not really, I mean that design is not really under consideration. The one that, that from the right, it's yeah. it's the it's the original study that prompted the state to um, <clears throat> to set aside funding for preliminary engineering. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the exact roadmap that's being followed. There's a lot of a lot of work that has to be done in between. So, got it. Great. Anyone else? Um, no. Excellent. So we'll move on to the consent agenda, which is really just the minutes. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Dr. Harrison leaves. Do I have a second? Second. Take care. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The second straight meeting we've had nothing but the minutes. <laughs> if they're adding things, we're going to consent agenda is feeling neglected. Right. Um, next up is a stipulation of agreement with the Irvington Police Association regarding pandemic premium pay. Um, it's kind of a catch up. For last week, we did the CSEA and non CSEA members. Um, and I guess the PBA got everything together. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, exactly a parallel agreement to what you approved at the last meeting for the CSEA. The PBA is now ready, but the same um, thresholds apply in terms of the payment that you're that you're making for premium pay. And, and in this particular agreement, the amounts are listed, um, it's spelled out specifically by uh, by union member. Great. And uh, again, thank the. Uh, 
CSEA uh, union delegates and PBA uh, president, I guess the vice president, as well as Larry and his staff and uh, Katie as well uh, for working through all this. Uh, you know, I, I think as a board, we feel good about this, that the money that we receive from the state is being shared with the people that kind of were most directly impacted from village staff. And we still have, I think, some money left over for the, for the village to, 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 to use as well. Um, but uh, again, thanks to all involved here. Uh, resolved to approve a stipulation of agreement with the Irvington Police Association regarding pandemic premium pay and to authorize the village administrator to execute said stipulation. And further resolved to authorize the clerk treasurer to make any 2022 2023 operating budget transfers necessary to implement the terms of the stipulation. I'll make a motion if I can have a second. second. All in favor? All right. All right. Next up is appointment of personnel in the recreation and parks departments. Joe, did you want to say something? <laughs> Thank you. You got to um, do it. I figured it'd be a good opportunity for you to see your new face who will be in our parks. This is Mike Neary. Mike will, as of 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, be our new groundskeeper in the parks department, working alongside Chris DiNardo. Uh, we've met several times. I think he's going to be a great fit for us. I kind of get nostalgic when I look at him because his father, um, who was a great man, actually coached youth baseball for us over 30 years ago and was one of the first coaches when we opened scenic hudson park so um he was a good guy and if mike's chip off the old block we're in for good times ahead so i want to thank larry for his help with making this happen and thank the board and also todd smith and greg nielsen who made this a very easy process to go through so he's your guy well so thank you so much and thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, like as I told you, Mike, when uh, you were hired, uh, you know, the DPW, I thought it was a great hire for the village. You're just one of those super positive guys that has a can do attitude. And uh, I think moving over to the rec, where you probably have more direct interaction with people on a day to day basis, at least in the summer, um, is a great fit. Like, I, I think it works out great. And, you know, you're following in some big footsteps, and I think you're, you got to do it. So, congratulations. Welcome aboard. Well Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Do the resolution to make it official? Yeah. <laughs> Resolved to appoint Mike Neary to the position of Parks Groundkeeper and annual salary of $77,813, effective May 2nd, 2023, subject to completion of a probationary period of not less than 12 weeks and not more than 52 weeks. So I'll make a motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, appointment of personnel in the Department of Public Works. Anything, uh, any contextual things here, Larry? Or? Uh, well, so there's a, a fair amount of movement, um, as you know, but we're, we're taking into account uh, one retirement um, in the department and uh, and then backfilling the positions after that. So that's what these three um, these three appointments are here for the public works department. Questions? Or less, uh, start reading. Results appoint Christian Enax to the position of laborer step one. An annual salary of $52,462, effective May 2nd, 2023. This position is subject to the completion of probationary period of not less than 12 weeks and not more than 52 weeks. I resolve to appoint Giovanni Morado to the position of motor equipment operator. Step one, the annual salary of $59,319, effective May 22nd, 2023. The position is subject to the completion of a probationary period of not less than 12 weeks and not more than 52 weeks. And further resolve to appoint Christopher Adoriso Position of laborer part time and hourly rate at $22 for the 28 hour work week, effective May 8th, 2023. Make a motion like now. Second. Second. All better. All right. Next is a uh, volunteer appointment to the Irvington Woods Committee. Uh, we'd like to appoint Warwick Norton as a member of the Irvington Woods Committee with the term to expire in December of 2023. I'll make a motion like now. Second. Second. All there. All right. All right. No, uh, I'll, uh, if you'd like, I'll introduce items um, 12 through 18. <laughs> sure. shot. Um, awesome. yeah. Sounds <laughs> good, Larry. These are, unless you want to go through them individually, it's welcome to. So items 12 through 18 are uh, the award of contracts related to individual trades that the village uses um, on an, a, a daily basis or an hourly basis, uh, time and material, so to speak. Um, it's a way of the village uh, being able to accomplish projects on a, on a efficient 
um, an efficient basis um, by with, and still comply with the uh, New York State bidding. Um, so if you'd like, I'll run through these uh, agenda items quickly. You can vote on each one. Uh, the con the uh, resolutions, the full resolutions are attached to the agenda. So this is essentially like a consent agenda. Uh, so agenda item 12, award of contract 2023-02 for general construction for Village of Irvington projects. So moved. The resolutions in the is all attached, so that you're making a motion. Okay, so you're going to say each one individually. And exactly, uh, and I just need a motion and a I, second. I'll make a motion. Can I have a second? Second. All there. All right. Thank you. Item number 13, award of contract 2023-03 for painting and finishing. So moved. If I can have a second. Second. All in favor? All right. War, uh, item number 14, award of contract 2023-04 for flooring. So moved, if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Item 15, award of contract 2023-05 for ceramic tile. I'll make a motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Item 16, award of contract 2023-06 for plumbing. I will make the motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, award of uh, sorry, number seventeen, award of contract twenty twenty three oh seven for electrical work. I'll make a motion. I can have a second. 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 All in favor. All right. right. And the last one in this series is item number eighteen, award of contract twenty twenty three fifteen for HVAC work. I will make a motion. I can have a second. Second. All in favor. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll, we'll step through nineteen individually, and then I'll group twenty and twenty twenty through twenty four together for you. So uh, 19 is approval of uh, A1 computer services. Yeah, so the only, this is our uh, computer consultant that uh, works for both the village departments, minus police and also police. They're separate contracts. Um, the resolution that's here, I would ask you just to modify it to simply add uh, that it's all subject to the final approval of the village attorney. There's a couple of issues that Marianne was kind enough to raise and I need to work out with the consultant. It's, you know, again, I don't, nothing that I don't think we can overcome. So, um, that's it. I have the resolution here. If you'd like, I can run through it. Yeah. 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 To authorize the village administrator execute agreements with a one computer services or computer support services for the village of Irvington and for the Irvington police department for an annual payment fee of 55,575 subject to the final approval of the village attorney. I'll make a motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor. All right. All right. So the next uh, next five items, uh, items 20 through 24, are simply extensions of existing contracts. These are all contracts that we bid last year at about this time. And uh, all of the vendors have agreed to an extension of their contracts for one year. And then uh, next year at this time, we'll likely bid them out again. It's kind of our rotation. So with that, uh, agenda item number 20, approval of extending contract 2022-03 for tree removal, tree pruning, and stump grinding. I'll make motion. I have a second. 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 All <laughs> item 21, approval of extending contract 2022-04 for miscellaneous hardware and supplies. I'll make motion. I have a second. All in favor. All right. Item 22, approval of extending contract 2022-05 for auto parts. I'll make motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor. All right. Aye. Item 23, approval of extending contract 2022-06 for heavy equipment. I'll make motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor. All right. And item 24, approval of extending contract 2022-14 for cleaning services. I'll make motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. That's it. Thank you. All right. Uh, then we have uh, the approval for fireworks supply. Um, this is the same company we've used for many years. Um, yep. Looks like we uh, we don't have the cool thing where they show us the cool display. On here yet. I know, and and actually. <laughs> That was the display that we we actually didn't even send that to Marianne, but we sent it. Oh, to, I got it. You got you got it today, and it's been reviewed. But it's that'll be. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks great. It'll be Exhibit A. I'll, I'll be happy to forward to you separately. Yeah, but it's like. always fun to see how many uh, yeah, whistlers. No, but Larry, this isn't the right contract. Exactly. So the other thing is, the the version that 
the version that's attached to the agenda is, is somewhat different than the one that Marianne reviewed. Marianne has the accurate contract. So all of this, and I apologize for messing that up on Friday, but all of this is subject to her final approval. We should have the resolution already. The resolution's here and ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it's almost exactly this, except there's an additional provision that if, if it's gonna be a, a, a washout, if you're going to cancel on the 4th of July, you have to let them know by 3 p.m. that day, which you probably would anyway. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, it's almost Seems fair. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll make sure that we sign the right contract. That's yeah. the bottom line. <laughs> so resolved to approve contract 2316 with Garden State Fireworks Inc. for fireworks display on July 4th, 2023, in the amount of $19,500. Authorize the village attorney, sorry, the village administrator executes the contract subject to the final approval of the village attorney. Make a motion right now, second. second. All in favor? All right. <clears throat> then authorization of a uniform allowance. So this is a, a little a little bit of housekeeping um, to extend uh, the same uniform allowance that, that union members receive to extend those benefits to the uh, uh, Nature Center Parks employee, uh, C.J. Riley. Um, so this is consistent with the, union, the normal union agreement, and we think it's fair that um, he received those same allowances given the nature of the work that he does and the, the filth that he works within, frankly. I think it's better filth than some other people. <laughs> um, sounds good to me. Resolved to authorize the payment of the uniform allowance of up to $750 per fiscal year to Charles J. Riley III upon the submission of valid receipts. I'll make a motion I can have a second. Second. All fair. Aye. Mm -hmm. And now we're down to reports of board standing committees and officers, trustee liaison reports. New Larry. I did not have a report this week. Doc Larry. 2023 Irvington Day Camp registration is still ongoing. There are 225 campers already registered. The department is accepting group permit requests for Matheson and for scenic Hudson Park. Permits are available online. Special thanks to the Irvington Historical Society for sponsoring the Girl Scouts presentation on the Isabel K. Benjamin on Isabel K. Benjamin at St. Boniface Church. The Girl Scouts under the leadership of Catherine Lark and Keach Hagee put on a great show. Twenty senior citizens and Joan Armstrong went to West Point yesterday to have lunch at the Thayer Hotel. The weather was not great, but they still had a fun day. The Community Advisory Board will meet next Tuesday, May 9th, 8 a.m. in the Senior Center. Irvington Woods Committee will celebrate the 10th anniversary of the O'Hara Nature Center on Saturday, May 13th. The Day of Nature, Education, Entertainment and Refreshments will be part of the event, which will run from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. To donate to the ONC, please contact Joe or Gino. Apple Grafting Workshop on Saturday was a tremendous success. They'll hold two more sessions on May 6th. Register online. Sponsorships for Rocktoberfest are now being accepted. Contact Joe Arcino. The Beautification Committee will be starting spring plantings on Main Street starting May on Monday, May 8th. Meet at the Rec Center if you're interested in helping at 10 a.m. And there's one more. <clears throat> the rain over the weekend created some water damage on the first floor of the Rec Center. Park staff worked five hours securing equipment and supplies. That's it. Mitch? Not on the side of the room. <laughs> Not on the side of the room. Okay. Um, yeah. I, uh, the theater, I know they're working through some issues with the HVAC, and I'm sure you're well aware of it. So, Larry, I'm sure you're working with them to try and remedy it. But it's, they're, uh, they're very concerned because it's another kind of uh, you know uh, hurdle that they have to jump over. With it. And my right has to do with whether the building can support the equipment, right? Whether it has the. That's a small part of what the problem is. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, yeah. yeah. So hopefully that that'll, that'll find a way to be remedied. And so the library, uh, I, I don't know if people know that you can subscribe to the library newsletter that comes every other week and tells you about the events that are coming up. It's really good to subscribe to that. And I always say there's great events. Look at the library. But as I felt the need to point out because it's tomorrow and it's thematic is that there's a, a Rick Feingold, who's a professor at, at Bergen Community College, is giving a presentation at 7 p.m. At the library, it's free, it's in person, and it's on Madam C.J. Walker, the first black female millionaire. So, um, in keeping, we just had the dedication of the plaza and everything. Um, and so, we, I, I, it's, I think it's these are the kinds of things that are super interesting, and it's great that the library is doing it. There's lots of other things in the month of May. I'm not going to read them all, but I just want to point out that one because it's tomorrow and it's Madam Walker. So. What time is that, sir? 7 p.m. Great. All right. 
Um, I'm going to re read the report from the um, DPW. So um, in the highway department, they their biannual catch basin cleaning is continuing. They commenced um, the Sires Field Road spring cleanup, installed a curb on Field Terrace, installed a curb on Harriman Road, um, repair the catch basin on Harriman Road and Parkside Way, repair the catch base, basin on Langton Avenue and Erie Street, repair the catch basin on Cindy Lane, um, and they transitioned all their equipment, unnecessary equipment from winter to spring. Um, and in conjunction with the Tree Commission, um, the 2023 spring planting, they planted seven trees on main, on the main street side of the street, and uh, they also hosted Arbor Day celebration. Josh stuck at the dentist, I couldn't make it. <laughs> Arbor Day would have been fun. We knew you yeah. wanted to be there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is my uh, bi-weekly Con Edison report. So I have good news and bad news. The um, which do you want first? <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take the good news. It's so rare. <laughs> the, good, the good news is that uh, they're scheduled to be done with East Sunnyside Lane on May 17th. Wow. Which is right around the corner. Yeah. It'll take a month later than they thought, right? Uh, yeah, about that. That's not bad. We don't summer, so. Um, the bad news is that they're moving to Main Street next. Main Street? Oh, that and, is a uh, What they're? Yeah, that's horrible, actually. Yeah, so they're they're move, They're going to be redoing mm -hmm. the portion from Broadway down to Dearman. So not too much, but it's still Main it's Street put at the, the intersection where Broadway is. Yeah, it's a, it's it's um, it's going to be a mess. Is the road going to close? No, no, but they, they'll be. So like, a lot of that in the ass, yeah. Um, it was the first time around. So, that? Yeah, well, there's there's a, there's a lot of room there. We just have to take parking out. But um, yeah. Anyway, the other thing is we've done it a few times before now. So and interestingly, <laughs> <laughs> we're really good. Yeah. And, I, and I think I, I don't we don't know 100 percent for sure, but we think that the state is actually pushing. Con Ed to get that done because they're going to be working in Broadway and the state has has Broadway scheduled for repaving. So the state came in and said, yeah, you yeah, have any major done. work, you better get it done. So that's, I think that's why Sunnyside's ending early. Mm. Hopefully it's, it's, it's a theory. I'm going with it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, that's what's happening. And they, they just paid Harriman as well. That was, that was, that was, that was yes. Case, so. Yeah, that was, we, we knew that was yeah, good. We, Couple weeks ago, but. right? We held them off from doing it back in the in the late fall when they were going to try to do it in the bad weather. Basically, it was would have been a terrible job. Um, but the second part of the news is that the state is paving Broadway, and we don't know the exact start date yet. We're we're going to be meeting with the state representatives. Um, it'll be a night job, and you know we won't really know when they're going to get to Irvington because they're going from the New York City line up to Sleepy Hollow, I think, um, in one stretch. So. Somewhere and there's else. no reconfiguration of, of no. no 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 bike <laughs> no just making sure so this is going to happen after sunnyside is open i'm hoping right yes for those of us who live in the corner of sunnyside and broadway it'd be unfortunate if it was both of the road no place to go yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it is at night so sunnyside would be that's true anyway. that's a good point <laughs> but you're, right. you're just gonna get there <laughs> yeah i can fly and that's it all right Square treasure report so capital budget requests have been collected from all the departments. So we'll be working on crunching the numbers and going through those. Um, also our annual uh, ARPA reporting was due um, April 30th. So we submitted that. It's an annual requirement that we have to submit. And um, we're in the process of renewing our general liability insurance, which goes into the new policy would start June 1st. That's okay. it. Great. Bill of Strange Report? No report. Village reporters report. Public comment. Anything at home there? Uh, you wore everyone out. Nice. <clears throat> Review of action items. I didn't have anything other than sign all the contracts. It's going to take a week. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I will make a motion to adjourn. If I have a second.